my name is Eric, and um, I would like to welcome actually my uh, my distinguished panelists here next to me, the experts actually in the field. So I'll give them a quick uh, quick minute to introduce themselves, and then we'll go into um into the um into a presentation from uh, both the ladies from Anexo, by the way, who's sponsoring this session. And thank you very much for that, Anexo. So I'll give a quick word to, um, let's start with uh, Magdalena, a quick word of introduction, please. Okay, uh, good morning. My name is Magdalena and I'm a solution engineer at Anexo. Thank you, Eva. Um, hi, my name is Eva uh, and I'm the head of sales at Anexo. Okay, Paolo. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Pablo Mligota. I'm responsible for both the roaming and international mobility services, EN Group. Okay, thank you. And then on my left, on your right, Honorable Salim. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Salim Mazroui. I'm the Director of Operations and Technology in Zoe. Thank you. And last but not least, Maxim. Yeah, I'm Maxim. Maxim McKean. I'm uh, working for a second company responsible for international carriers. Thank you. And we heard you um, this morning already in the in the first session. So thank you so much. Anyway, um, let's move on. We have a very, very, very tight, uh, strict plan, actually. It, uh, there, there is a count that says 43 that minutes. Uh -uh. 12.30 is lunch. And I will, I will get you to your lunch on time. So if I may invite um, uh, the ladies Eva and Magdalena kindly to do their and start their presentation. Okay, so take it away. It's yours. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you for everyone being here, trying to uh, be not too blinded by the lights. But before we start off, uh, I wanted to have a little bit of a show of hands and ask you who here has nightmares? Nightmares are dreams that wake you up at night, that you're falling down or you're woken up by a clown. Me personally, I have a nightmare that in a couple of days, I'll be going back to Poland out of this beautiful weather and I'll be frozen to death uh, at the airport. But uh, if you don't want to share your nightmares, if you don't want a show of hands, I know Eric, you should be uh, up there, Gabriela, thank you. Uh, you, you, have, you have nightmares. Um, but today we want to talk about actually good dreams. We want to give you good dreams and we want to tell you about the dream of effortless connectivity powered by the MEF API standards. Without further ado, I give you Magdalena, who is a solution engineer at Anexo, which means that she's responsible for making the dreams come true for our customers. And this is Eva. Eva is the head of sales at Anexo, and she's responsible for amazing dream. I do make the, I do create the dreams. Right? And this is my niece. Right. Don't be fooled by that cute face and that pretty bunny she's holding because she actually represents the biggest threat to the telco industry. Right? She is one of the digital natives, the Generation Z, who were born with a phone in her hand, who have learned to swipe before they could speak. They want everything at the click of the fingers instantly now, everything as a service, everything as you go. But why should you should you really care, right? We're talking we're not talking about consumers. We're talking about wholesale. We're talking about B two B here. Well, actually, these pretty faces will account for almost thirty percent of the global workforce in a couple of years, which means that you're looking at your next C level executives. You're looking at your next partners in business. Now, are you ready for these cute faces to drop the bunnies and become the next C level executives? We beg to differ. Looking at the companies who really get the customer experience right, who have the digital, everything ready for the digital natives, like Amazon, the average sales cycle there, it's 15 minutes. That means that 50% of all the sales that happen, also B2B sales, they are completed within 15 minutes. And if we compare it to our customers, telecoms globally, the average sales cycle is about seven days. And that means this is about 700 times more than that of these digital native companies. And that's not really impressive. And all of you that didn't raise their hands here, this is your nightmare. This is our industry nightmare. Meet Basima. Basima, she's a procurement manager at Verizon. 
and she's not so happy today that she looks like on the slide because she received the request to purchase an internet line for Verizon's customer from the partner. So her nightmare just begins. And you can wondering why this is just a regular job for her. That's right. But from her, pers for, from her perspective, it's not so trivial because now she need to communicate with every partner. She need to log in to every portal. Some of them even don't have any portal. And then she will try to go through the processes without getting lost and making mistakes. And this is the bigger challenge for her. Her nightmare is huge. And she even can't imagine when she will finish this task. And meet Fatima. She's on the other side of the nightmare. She has received the request from Basima. She's an account manager at Connectify X, which represents uh, a lot of the account managers here, right? And her nightmare is that she's racing with all of her competitors, right? She knows she has to deliver to Basima really fast, but at the same time, she's being held back by her internal systems, by the Excel files, by the emails, by running around the company actually making sure that the service that is ordered is feasible, is doable in that exact configuration. And she shares that nightmare on the other side. But let's help these women have a good dream. So let's put them to sleep and let them have a nice dream. And they share a dream. They share a dream of effortless connectivity between each other. Let's help them translate in less than 15 minutes. So we'll show you the process from the address validation uh, all the way through the product order, and we'll make it happen in 15 minutes. So be ready. We're putting the girls to sleep now. Focus on the screen, please. We'll see what Basima is doing right now. She's entering the address of the customer location. Everything is OK here. So now. She's just sending this information to the partner. The address has been validated. Now she needs to just choose the service, internet access. She needs to enter in some information about the product, some perimeters like bandwidth, type, number of IPs. And Now she's sending this information to the partner. It took like one minute. Now she got information that the product offering qualification is done and it's ready. So it means that she can buy this service. Now she needs just add some additional information like contract length. Sending this information to the partner. Now she needs to just ask for the quote. Also with one quick, she got the prices. Everything is okay with the prices. Now she can send request for the order. The order has been sent to the processing. She's done and it was less than 15 minutes. I think it was a lot less than 15 minutes. But on the other side, we have Fatima, who has, who's been on the other side of, of, uh, of the order the entire time. So actually, she could be um, taking a step back and enjoying her coffee because everything is done automatically. But since Fatima is a good account manager, she takes this opportunity to create an opportunity in her CRM system so that she, she has this um, 360 view of the customer later on. So she can monitor and do perhaps an upsell or uh, understand the, the customer from, from a systems perspective. She only needs to check the quotes and do a little price adjustment. She can negotiate with, with Basima or give her a discount to, uh, to make sure that she's better than the competition. But then everything is done on her side. The order is created and Fatima can enjoy her commission. Right? So before she wakes up, 
um, she's getting the commission for the order that she has received from Basima. And now I will tell you what is behind Basima's and Fatima's dream. There is one element between the buyer, that is Verizon, and the seller, the Connectify company. This element is API Hub, an Exo API Hub. And this solution can translate the request of the buyer in the MEF standard to any other integration standard on the seller's side, to any uh, system, uh, to any backend system on the seller's side. And it doesn't matter what kind of system it is. It could be Salesforce, it could be Microsoft Dynamics, even Excel file. It doesn't matter because all of them were integrated by an Exo IP hub. So you're probably thinking, uh, you know, the, it's only a dream. The girls have woken up and we've shown you a slide with the system. But uh, we already have customers who are living the dream with us. And one of these customers is uh, Deutsche Telekom. When uh, they started off with us, uh, they had trouble with responding to, to the automatic quote requests. And also, uh, they have been asked by AT&T to, uh, to be able for that uh, MEF API connectivity with, with, with AT&T. And they, they were also looking for a customer portal. Uh, so now the, the implementation is, is almost done. We're already, um, we've already made sure that they can, um, they can handle the requests coming in from AT&T via the MEF APIs. And we're building the customer portal. And we're doing this with, with best of breed technologies, uh, with, with MuleSoft as an orchestration and integration platform, and also Salesforce as a CRM, and also the CPQ solution that is making sure that the quotes and uh, the product catalog, they're all in one place, they're all unified, and they're making sure that it's a streamlined, safe, and um, seamless journey for the, for the end customers. Yeah, to start a slide. All right. I'm not going to, I'm going to save you some time and leave Nick Sarah for the panel. But um, we just wanted to, to end with that, um, with, with, with a bit of an introduction about an exo. So you already know we are the dream makers together with Magdalena, but there's more of us. Um, and, and we're working globally as, um, as a systems integrator. We have a very big focus on the telecommunications industry. We work with wholesale, FTTX and uh, enterprise B2B companies all over the world. And throughout our tenure, over the 12 years that we've, we've been in the market, we've developed some specific accelerators in terms of software, but also the processes that, that uh, we've seen around the globe uh, to make sure that if you, uh, if you work with us, you hit the ground running, you don't have to develop everything from scratch. So you can use our experience and our pre-built scenarios, processes uh, to, uh, to start off really quickly. And what's, um, what's most important there is that we have a very big dedication to standards. We showed you MEF today, uh, but, but we're also um, very engaged with the TM Forum community. So everything that we do, all the solutions that we create, we have the ingrained standards in them. So that makes sure that you know, everything happens quicker. Uh, there is no vendor lock for you. And um, you can use the best uh, standards that are out there for the, for the industry. And with that thought, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, I can sit down now. Thank you so much. A big applause. Any questions? Magdalena, oh. don't run yet. Don't run, run yet. Run. Don't, don't, don't run yet. Any, Any questions? questions for the ladies? Come on, guys. Wake up. You had your coffee. It's almost lunch. So, you know, you're fresh. Come on. Everyone's uh, craving that lunch. Nobody wants to talk about the nightmares, so nobody's raising their hands. Huh? And with that note, I would like to uh, to thank again Enexo for uh, for the, this uh, and Eva and, um, and Magdalena for this uh, this presentation. So thank you so much. And let's move in because um, um uh, we're talking about transformation. But you're providing dreams, right? Every so day. <laughs> how is it talking about a success story? How is it to live the dream, the Enexo dream? Well, uh, we, we talked. That's what what the people want to know. Hey, I you know NXO. Okay, nice company. Okay, you know they they know their whatever they know the works. But how is it to live the NXO dream? How is it to live the dream? Um, well, it all depends. You know what kind of co of a company we work with, right? We have the the best scenario is always working with uh, greenfield operations where we have the 
uh, the capacity and uh, the the possibility to start off fresh from creating the processes and creating the the systems that are guiding, let's say, the lead to to cash journey. And that's a little bit of an easier dream to have because uh, you can do it on the side. It's not really impacting any of your operations. And um, so, so we, we, we probably prefer that way. And, and we recommend this to our customer to start that on the side. But we also have these brownfield projects with well-established companies, with um, outgrown, over-customized systems, uh, with uh, data in various, uh, various places, uh, right? So, so it all becomes, um, you know, a, a verge on nightmare dream, right? Uh, because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot more difficult to sit down and, and, and go through these, uh, these systems. But this is, a, I think it's a great opportunity for this. Uh, we're, we're talking about digital transformation. We're talking about AI here and, and moving on. And actually we, we, we see that um, having that dream is a perfect way to, to do the house cleaning, right? To reimagine what the company could look like. And we encourage companies to take that step because otherwise with the technological debt uh, only by building the the infrastructure, but keeping the the, the legacy systems behind, this is not going to uh, create uh, the kind of traction that you want uh, with with selling your services, right? So I would say, uh, if you want to live live the dream, you have to accept the nightmare and accept that there is a uh, there's work to be done. Uh, the sooner, the better. I'm so happy that I sleep really well at night and I don't have any nightmares. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Eva. It was, was, it's really great. Now, getting into it, because um, we're going to uh, we're talking about the empowering of the wholesale transformation and, you know, with the standardized uh, MAF uh, business APIs and all the challenges which comes to it. So let me throw this, you know, and, and I, let me try to get a, a couple of um, uh, topics in there. Um, Maxim, if I may, may start with you, I mean, highlighting the importance of standardized um, APIs for fostering the, the interoperability among the different uh, uh, telecommunication systems and platforms. What is your thought about it? And and what, and maybe you can give us or tell us a bit more the challenges um, um, uh, we see in, in achieving the API standardization and, and the way to overcome them. And actually, it's, it's for all of you guys. But if I may start with you, so I know it's a couple of questions, but sure, yeah, we, so, we have to run a bit on time because yeah. we're hungry. You know, that's that's so. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Eric. Actually, it, first of all, great presentation. I'm definitely buying the dream for sure. Yeah, so it's like uh, it's, uh, it's. You see, it the, works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, service automation and uh, and. Uh, and uh, the standardization is, is one of the vehicles to 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 be there for sure. Uh, you know, as in my past, like uh, and still still now, so we're we are more or less in sales. You know, everybody's business is in sales more or less. And I I remember uh, just looking at this uh, this uh, uh, ordering system. Yeah, was how, how how you say it? Yeah, so the, the, this form, and uh, you know. I have like devil, some devil inside my myself uh, ask very big questions of what if, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that's the key issue. Yeah. So here and uh, as we're talking about challenges, and uh, well, well, what I mean. So yeah, uh, first of all, I'm I'm sure that you're absolutely rightly positioned. So like uh, the, the the platform as being kind of a bridge between uh, between. Uh, like legacy systems and actually environments, so, so it's it's very diverse, it's very different, and very long different stages of evolution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And every care cares, you, I'm, I'm sure that you also, you know, thinking of this what if question, right? Uh, so and th 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 that's why yeah, th that would be the biggest challenge for me. Yeah. So and uh, we we are making such an exercises for quite some time. You know, we are actually incumbent you know, carrier. And uh, I, I can tell you that uh, we uh, the, the biggest problem is uh, is not actually the selecting of the platform, selecting the standard, etc. So, uh, you know, 
fortunately there's not a question for me now it's like uh, lso is a very big very good good and uh, framework for sure so uh, framework is the key here it's like a constitution which definitely required but in order to approach at least to implementations you need to do so many things in, inside your, your organization beginning from like uh, physical inventory uh, business processes etc and in the end of the day the culture of the company itself and uh, we need to define you you have to define uh, the strategic like value no, not the values actually but the strategic goals what, what you need to achieve for instance do you need let's say uh, to reduce uh, from seven uh, the circular sales cycle from seven days to one day, and uh, is it really kind of uh, the hot topic in wholesale? Because some sometimes people salespeople wouldn't be happy to sell uh, the same circuit so within seven days. So he he would prefer to work this service for years without touching it. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. So it's like a lot of lot of uh, these small things which goes much deeper into the organizational culture and the environment and business environment of, of each company. And then that for me would be the, the biggest challenge. And the finally, so we have touched already uh, on these first sessions, the, uh, of course, on the little different scale and different uh, topic, but actually similar things of uh, cooperation between the companies. And on previous session, we, we were talking about the uh, cooperation of the network level and structure level, et cetera, et cetera, all this stuff, regulation. And here, so we the, the exactly the similar discipline, but it comes much deeper inside. It's it's very intrinsic, yeah. And when it comes to intrinsic uh, normalization between companies, that actually comes down to even DNA of the organization. And that's that's the biggest challenge, I think, because sometimes you say, okay, yeah, like like the the idea, of the technical solution is ideal. Okay, so let's go for it. But then the the next stage, you say, you are bumping up with the with the cultural differences, with the different uh, incentives, different interests, and actually uh, even even uh, the behavior of salespeople can be different from organization, organization to organization. So that would be uh, the biggest challenge. And this the cultural thing is the most complicated, but the most crucial stuff when it comes to these kind of things. Yeah. Be be aware of the impact which it can have within the organization. That's actually what yeah, absolutely yeah. Will be because if challenge. you are first of all, you know, to define what you really do, you want, and do you really want it? Sorry for saying that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then the if you are prepared for that, and then once you have an answer to both questions. You pick the technology, you pick a framework, and go go forward full speed. Okay. So, what's your pick on it? Thank you, uh, Eric. Yeah, so coming from my previous life as uh, heading IT, I, I understand your pain that you've <laughs> given as examples, Danny. So, yeah, for me, even from a technological point of view, I would like to have a more standard approach. You know, if there's a standard in place, it makes easier to integrate systems. Uh, it, it also complements in terms of shortening the time to market, which in, in uh, complements, you know, makes the sales team, the marketing team happy. Um, it also, from a telecom point of view, it also, um, you know, having standard APIs, it makes it easier to encourage more developers. You know, the development community can start contributing more towards these APIs uh, as opposed to just looking at the uh, uh, niche telecom suppliers who provide you these solutions. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely uh, supporting this. And I think also moving the way that telecom is opening up now, you know, with the adoption of APIs, you're also opening up your network to the internet, you will have more integrate, more, uh, not just other operators, but also OTTs, there'll, there'll also developers, business business, uh, business uni uh, companies will also be integrating to your network. Again. So you need to have something ready and you need to start gearing up your existing systems to be able to cater to this uh, requirements. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Pablo, it's you. I mean, in yeah. the end, how do you um, uh, how do you see it? The uh, standardization with with the APIs, and 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 where do you see the challenges? And maybe you can tell us what is your vision, how to overcome them, what to do. I just want to ask, how many of you guys know what LSO means or MEF? Only one hand. Okay, here you go. More and more yeah. coming. So let's start from the basics. So 
what the industry is trying to do through MEF, which is um, a forum uh, concentrates, uh, I think it's Linux driven, right? Uh, MEF. Um, but basically what they're trying to do is just bring some discipline into building up ecosystems, right? Um, if you, you saw Salesforce in that presentation, Salesforce is the number one CRM because they were very quick at building an ecosystem around the CRM. They build APIs quick. They really build uh, a universe around their own platform. So telcos are moving into the same direction with the fact that you got 5G coming up. You got technologies that will need latency. They will need throughput. And if you're building an application, you need to be really up there understanding how that application will land in the mobile device. So you need to ping the network and say, is that network you know, fast enough, it is quick? And LSO brings discipline in two areas. One is uh, business, and the second one is the operational part. And I think back to the question Eric posed is uh, the challenges that we see is getting all the, the players to play. I think uh, this is this will become effective once everyone is on board, not just one operator in one country because you need the other two. Stand. Where do we stand now to, to get everybody on? No, on I think we're we're not there yet. We're still evolving. I think, um, um, for example, in, in uh, there's eight use cases uh, between MEF and then Open Gateway, yeah. GSMA. So I, there's not that many use cases. And I think there's around 21 operators subscribed to the GSMA one. Uh, you need probably 700. Minimum. So we need everyone in. And everyone needs to really work that integration. So that's the main, main challenge. Yeah. Getting more uh, scaling to the ecosystem. Okay. And when, because by the end of the day, it only works if everybody works together, right? Mm -hmm. If it if it all comes together. I mean, we, we saw these things in the i3 forum uh, 20 years ago when I was still young. You know, I was in there. Um, so I know the difficulties, but again, I mean, we're the, the world became faster, so we should get to that goal even faster, right? Any anything where you say, well, you know, when do you expect that we can? I mean, what can the audience expect from when the things come together a bit more? I think it's part of the transformation. People will realize quick that they need to play this API game. Uh, telcos are not; uh, they couldn't be outside of of the game. Um, if you go back to the uh, to Twilio, uh, you're, if you guys are familiar with Twilio, they really build the the SMS and the CPaaS business around themselves through APIs. That was a brand new uh, um, business that came up out of the pandemic. Uh, nobody was orchestrating; it's only an SMS. Now you got six, seven, ten channels to deliver a message. This is exactly what the the telco has to go through. I think uh, we need more participation, but also more results. Um, I think we need to start showing more traction with real use cases um, and then get everyone on board. Again, it doesn't work if I got one operator in one country, any of the other two. Ah, doesn't work. Doesn't no, work. No, no. Okay. So hopeful, right? To get it there. Um, yeah. I just wanted to jump in on the, Please. On the challenges, right? Because uh, as we mentioned before, we work with, with companies globally and I think there's three top challenges that we see at the moment. And first of all, it's the interpretation of standards. And um, we see a lot of companies embarking on this journey alone and trying to interpret, but actually the documentation and all that, trust us, it's not that easy to uh, to interpret the standards, right? So, um, and and we've been there, we, we've we've done it. So it's uh, so it's packaged in a box. And I think uh, the lesson there is to to work uh, with with partners again uh, who have who have been through that journey and who can interpret the, the, the standards and, and make you hit the ground running, right? Um, the second challenge I see is still, and this is on point with, with what Pablo mentioned, it's the companies are not really pulling in yet. Um, so the standards, and everybody likes to have, the nice thing about standards is there's a lot of them. Yeah, everybody but, has come on, we, version, we right? know how it works with the operators. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's put it on the agenda for next week, right? Yeah, exactly. But the uh, week after, oh no, then we have to plan for uh, the holidays. No, yeah. come on, guys, move, because the world is going faster. Don't miss it. Move. And the third one, and that's on the on the standards. 
For example, MEF, they release a new version of the standard every six months, right? Ouch. So, um, you know, it's it's always difficult uh, to keep up with the standards. And we see that, that you know, AT&T is on a different standard than some of the sellers, right? And and we get these questions. So what standard, what, is it Dolly or is it Barbie now? Um, what, yeah. what standard do we have to, uh, do we have to have, right? To, to, to be in that ecosystem, to leverage the ecosystem, to leverage the standard, um, and not be outside again, right? So, so again, I think it also comes down to to working with partners who have this taken care of um, as a managed service, um, so that they can make sure that you're up to the standard, to the latest one. Right? Okay, moving on, guys, um, uh, because we still want to have the five G uh, uh, impact in uh, with it, and then the role of APIs in uh, in five G and beyond. So, Eva, if I may stay with you. Um, Again, double question. Um, exploring how APIs play a pivotal role in uh, in unlocking actually the full potential um, uh, uh, of the five G technology and its applications. And I would like to hear the opportunities which are there in leveraging to to enable new services and the capabilities in our five G era and wake up six G is coming. Oh yeah, it's always some some G coming, right? So something There's around. Always a G coming, right? There's always a G coming. <laughs> um, well, again, from our perspective, I see I see two things, right? With five G, we have the ability to have um, to have slicing, right? And um, the APIs are needed uh, to be able to manage that that slicing efficiently, right? Uh, when we're talking about applications like autonomous vehicles or uh, or augmented reality, virtual reality, where where that bandwidth and where that low latency play a role, it's crucial that these APIs, uh, standardized APIs, they come into picture so they make sure that there is that real-time uh, communication between uh, the devices, between uh, you know, the, the, the network. Right? Self-service portals. Self-service portals, right? Um, and, and the other one is connected with IoT, again. 5G is bringing uh, in the promise of you know managing the millions or not even uh, not even that but huge numbers of, of IoT devices again APIs they have to manage these devices make them to be able to communicate between each other and uh, and make sure that we have these use cases in healthcare um, and um, and other services right that that require that. Uh, Latency, low latency. Low latency, low, lower, 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 lower. <laughs> Maxime, want to bump in? How can the um, um, uh, how can the APIs play a pivot role in uh, in unlocking the full potential? Where do you see it? Uh, yeah. So as I said, uh, I I truly so still you know continue to work about standardization and the standard etc. It's, it's a very good question from Pablo. So that about who knows about LSO etc. So it's <laughs> it's awareness awareness thing is a very important thing. Uh, another comment to what I would like to to, to say it, it maybe not comment but example uh, standardization is is a really challenging thing. It needs to be it needs to be inclusive or somehow inclusive or at least perce perceived by the by by a critical mass of uh, of 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 players, and I I give you example with the CDN. You remember CDN, so CDN Federation. So like uh, five years ago, like maybe it's eight years ago, CDN Federation was like a very booming stuff. Okay, it will kill, disrupt it, the whole market. Akamai will cry, etc. So it will be peer to peer communication everywhere, etc. And also the technology was ready. But somehow people like you know one people say what's in it for me I am big if I'm big enough uh, to 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 participate in this etc cetera, etc cetera. it's all about it, it's it, it's a crucial thing is the, is the adoption and the awareness and uh, that's why we shouldn't from my point of view so we shouldn't overestimate the how to say the power of standards uh, like reputation or perceived reputation or pr pronounced reputation which is different you know. <laughs> So that's why, uh, yeah. So like uh, again, so it's uh, it's a back to back to my my thought about uh, about the, the 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 culture itself, and uh, yeah, it needs to be needs to be attractive, needs to be like uh, like easy to use, and the 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 project like like yours uh, uh, and integrators like like like, like yourself. So it's 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 a great uh, great great uh, thing to have, and definitely. Uh, thanks to you and thanks to efforts, uh, it, it, it definitely has a chance to be, yeah, 
Yeah. Eric, if I can uh, just interject one thing. Sure. Uh, that's why you're here. You just work here. That's why so, you're here. No, I, you bring a good point because the um, you're catering to a different customer now. The 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 person who, or the entity that was going to buy services from you is the developer now. And developers, has, they're very unique, the way they buy services. They don't buy SMS in bulk. They, they buy an API to an SMS engine or an SDK in an app that will fulfill another type of service. We're not ready for that. We're not ready to serve that community, that development community, as a telco. This will bring us that type of uh, interfacing with them. But we're mutating. We're As a telco, we're not offering that voice, that SMS, that data channel the way we used to do it. Is through this, and if you're not ready for to do that, you're gonna miss that opportunity. People will find over the top different ways to do it. So it is a call to action, as you said, fast, because we're missing the boat. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. So again, so it's also about this DNA. So the intersection of DNA fields, etc. If there are there are like two operators similar to each other. But you, you, but you have to find some, some, some pinpoints to connect uh, in terms of like culture, DNA, perception, etc. All right, talking about um, the operators and the carriers, um, Salim, um, what I want to know from the whole round, actually, um, I mean, how can APIs actually empower carriers to deliver superior customer uh, experience and, and 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 drive the innovation? I mean, we just discussed that they have to move, right? They have to move. But let's assume they are moving, okay? So how can APIs um, uh, empower new services and, and information, innovation? So assuming you have, you know, you have the developers on board that they're uh, utilizing the- Get them. The APIs, <laughs> and then uh, you know the network is open for uh, to provide services. You know the, the use cases. There are various use cases you can accommodate. You can do um, customized solutions, customized services, uh, omni-channel. Uh, you know you can open up your your platform to different OTT providers that they can even use. Uh, you can, it doesn't necessarily have to be provided from one OTT. For example, you can provide the same services uh, using the OTT's uh, APIs. So the, the the use cases are there. Uh, we will become more and more visible. And also the developers community will also contribute more. Because right now I can see from the Open API initiative, you know, there are specific use cases that have already been uh, uh, stated. Yeah. And, and now imagine if you open that up, to others and you know you'll have more and more uh, requirements coming in and i think from an operator's perspective it's important uh, not just from the api's perspective but even internally you need to gear up your systems to be ready uh, to be able to cater to these use cases even on from a charging perspective you need to be able to, uh, to be able to uh, charge based on the specific uh, subscription model that you'll have here. okay you want to bump in here pablo yeah, well, I would agree. Absolutely. I think the challenge also is on the charging models. I mean, he touched on that where assistants need to be the, you know, both VSS and OSS system to absorb this. You need to make this a product. Yep. If you don't make a product, you cannot commercialize it. And then you need a marketplace where you put the product so people will consume through a marketplace. So your sales force will not be selling this. Mm. So that changed the front end, that changed the back end, and it has to be all digital enabled. Mm -hmm. That transformation is massive. And as you mentioned correctly, telcos are not that fast. So I think the, um, again, back to, this is a great initiative. It put us in a different space, but uh, I would encourage everyone to to participate really heavy on this, be more aggressive. Um, again, we saw the story about WhatsApp and the SMS business. We don't want to see that one again. Wake up, right? Eva, anything to add? On this one, yeah, I mean, I look at it really from from three three layers, right? You have your customer facing um, applications, your self service portals, uh, mobile applications, and all that different touch points that you have with your customers. And while you're using um, APIs for that, you can get that real time experience out there, right? So so your customers are able to instantly check, you know, their their billing information, all that uh, reaching into your systems internally, not having to wait, not having to pick up the phone, 
all that. So that's 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 the one layer. The second layer is your, is your BSS systems, right? And, and there's a lot of legacy systems that are not ready to consume those those APIs, right? And and this is quite a, quite a challenge on that. But again, imagining that you can have um, everything integrated, right, from your network layer to the BSS to the customer exposed um, applications, that creates an, an amazing opportunity to uh, to not allow these um, WhatsApps to to happen again. Uh, to you, but really leveraging, you know, um, all your systems, all that automation uh, to to deliver that extremely enhanced customer experience, right? Absolutely. Okay, guys, quick closing statement. What should we look out for? I mean, I'm not asking for a crystal ball, but what should we look out for? Or what is the message you would like to give uh, to the audience? Maxime, if I may start with you. Actually, I will finish with uh, the same message as uh, with I, I, I was beginning with. It's it's uh, it's all about the culture uh, and DNA of uh, the organization. And uh, from practical point of view, of course, the dream of like uh, of the all the commercial people when when you have like a very like a lot of lot of uh, legacy systems uh, just to nuke them all and uh, create a completely new one. Yeah, that that was the dream. Unfortunately, it's not always possible. That's why. You know, we need to take like balanced approach in uh, normalizing our first of all our I internal uh, infrastructures, uh, including IT infrastructures, and then to be prepared for this one. Having uh, API and LSO standards as a as a framework, as a constitution, if you will. So, and I strongly believe uh, believer that this is for sure the way forward. Okay, thank you, Salim. Yeah, so I think uh, the, the talk about the, the, the initiative about Open API is something that I'm also encouraging other operators. Uh, we as Amantel are also uh, gearing up to get on board. Uh, it's something that we see value and it's it will benefit in terms of for, for the industry perspective. So, yeah, we need to start moving into that direction rather than having a closed network and doing the traditional way of, uh, you know, doing ad hoc integrations, basically. Thank you. Pablo? I would um, encourage, I mean, Ian is going through a transformation right now from telco to telco. So we're putting that in every single outlet to signal the market that we're getting there. Um, I believe 5G gives us an opportunity, is a very unique opportunity to, to control and be more relevant in the ecosystem because we, we can enable significant new business from IoT, drone management, gaming. Uh, if we do this right on 5G, that will be the launching pad. For the future okay famous last words uh, eva famous last words we, we've shown you the dream today and uh my closing remark is that uh we turn that dream into reality and and appreciate that apis they really drive innovation and uh if we're talking about all that innovation through these uh sessions um apis and integrating different amazing technologies different pieces into our infrastructure making that uh seamless across the board, across all the layers, that's going to uh, be an amazing thing. So uh, I encourage you to follow the dream and um, not wake up too fast. <laughs> thank you so much. And with those uh, words, um, I would like to uh, thank my panelists, of course, Eva, Magdalena, thank you so much for your presentation as well. Pablo, Salem, of course, and, and Maxime, and you. And um, no time for questions. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We will not do that because you're hungry. Now it's lunch, but I would like to see you after lunch because we have more sessions to, 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 to come up, talking about messaging and the platforms and talking about data centers and submarine cables. So a lot to discuss, a lot to listen to, and a lot to learn from, I hope. So I would like to thank you so much. And now enjoy. Pick up your fork and eat. Come on, have lunch. Thank you. Thank you.